may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom! Okay, this is a weird glitch. When I click on stuff, like, nothing happens. Like, it's not- it's not giving me the menu. Oh no. Did I break it? Did I break it? Welcome back to Mini Nublar in Jurassic World Evolution 2. And in this episode, we're gonna be working on the Indominus Rex habitat. But first, I have quite a few comments shoutouts to get to. Uh, so first and foremost, we're gonna go in here because I have added to this aviary the Geosternbergia, as requested by Mario Source the First. Is this the skin that you specifically requested? Hold on, I did make it. I did make- There you go. It is indeed a beauty. And then we have a Blobfish1169. Red hearted and clipped within 12 seconds. Can I get a round of applause for that? Okay, I didn't do a swamp, but you can't have everything, okay? I'm not Santa Claus. Uh, requested Pro Ceratosaurus. So I added them in the aviary with Geostenbergia. And the theme is kind of like colorful Chris. I don't know, you gotta do something to- uh, branding, it's important. Uh, <laughs> Alright, and then another one is FlyingFly1315. They requested to have like a lighthouse on the little offshore island. I did have to make the island a little bit bigger to actually be able to fit it here, but um, well there it is, we have a lighthouse. And finally, um, Caden ASMR had a suggestion what about a VIP section? And I think that would work absolutely perfectly for the Indominus Rex enclosure that we're going to be working on today. So the Indominus Rex enclosure is going to be part of a VIP section. And what I figured I would do is add like a little dock over here. Because, you know, we are on the east side of the island. So we can make our little east dock. And then this is going to be like a high security Indominus Rex habitat. I like double lined it. Um, cause it's gonna be double fenced. I don't, I don't know what this is gonna be. Something interesting, no doubt. And, you know, the path comes out of Mini Malta over here. It's just gonna go around like that. And you might notice that I made uh, a change to Baryonyx Bay here. I kept the tour, but I removed the second building over here. Because, of course, this is gonna be our VIP section. And I didn't want to... I didn't want the tour people to come trickling in over here uh this tower does still need like an access point so what i'll do is um probably have like a, a path run along this fence like uh, that and then there will be another fence over here might as well do that since we're here there, so I'm just gonna follow the curve, more or less. It's not ideal uh, to have like this long path going over here just for the uh, just for the tower, but I needed it to have like you know the symmetry at the at the edge of the bay over there, and of course it still does need to be reachable. Uh, but this is what we're going to be working on today. Now, it's going to be a little bit different from usual because it's actually already really late at night and my neighbors are probably cursing my very existence right now. So I'm actually going to stop talking. I'm just going to... I'm just going to build quietly by myself, by my lonesome. It's very sad, honestly. Give it, give it a like. Yay, this is my life now. <laughs> And then I'll do the voiceover tomorrow and I'll be able to edit it. But if I have to wait until tomorrow to build the whole thing and edit it as well, then I'm just not going to have enough time to get the mini Nublar episode out on time. So that is how I'm going to have to do it. I'm sorry about that, uh, but I hope that it's still going to be enjoyable. And you're still going to listen to me rambling. I'm still going to be talking. I'm just not talking and building at the same time. The next day. Good morning, everyone. Let's see what Eva was up to at 1 a.m. yesterday building this high security VIP section for the Indominus Rex. And of course, that starts with fencing. Just a lot of fencing. I can't believe that this is the 15th week of Mini Nublar, but I appreciate it so much that so many people are still watching and enjoying this series and commenting their suggestions. Overall, it's just really shaping up to be my favorite build on the channel so far, but I do already have an idea for the next series that I'm excited about. So, you know, even though it'll be sad when Mini Nublar comes to an end in a couple of episodes, 
there's there's a bright future ahead of us is what I'm alluding at. But yeah, for this, uh, I'm like, you know, I, I drew the the like outline with sand at first to sort of start with, give myself a guideline. That is, after all, one of my tips. So I should probably use some of my own tips, shouldn't I? <laughs> and now I'm just figuring out this section on the side. Um. Down by the water, that's where our east dock is going to be, so the terrain slopes up there, so that's where there needs to be an opening so that the dock is actually available to, um, um, well, to people. <laughs> uh, only the right, only people with the right authorization, of course. And I decided that that little square bit off to the side uh, would give access to the east dock, um, you know, for personnel. Uh, but also towards the other side, it would be access to the VIP section. So it's, it's the entry section to the VIP section, essentially. And then people enter like this corridor that runs along the diagonal side and the other straight side of the Indominus Rex enclosure. So you can sort of see where I'm going with that, right? So they enter between those like reinforcements over there and, uh, and then they go around essentially. Now, I had to finagle this quite a bit <laughs> to like get everything lined up. I think that's what happens when... Um, when I don't have to talk and build at the same time, when I just when I just get to build, I do tend to be much more perfectionistic. Is that a word? Is that the word? Perfectionisty? No, that can't be the word. But you get it, right? I'm much more of a perfectionist when I'm not trying to um, use my gray matter for other purposes, such as communicating. You know, I can just get totally lost in the process of building. And yeah, I think that that is one of the advantages of me doing the build the way I did it right now. You know, it was it was purely necessity, and I'll get into that in like a minute. Um, but I do think that it comes with some advantages, like being able to get a little bit more... Um, perfectionistic with it. And also, what you might notice is that this footage is actually sped up by 200%, so it's twice the speed. And the reason I did that is so I could show you the entire build. So what I always do for these mini Nublar episodes is I record for an hour and then I cut it down into 30 minutes episodes. So that means literally half of the building process is cut down for, you know, you know to make it a more manageable, more scrumptious size as, as far as videos go. So what I did with this one, since, you know, I'm not building and talking at the same time, I'm doing this voiceover after the fact, I figured instead of cutting down the video, I would shrink it. So, you know, one hour is 30 minutes if I just speed it up by 200%. And we can see the entire process. Oh God, I just hit something. It probably deserved it. As I've been rambling, what I've done here is I've added like a little bit of monorail track to give it some height and some visual interest. And I also put fencing in front of the viewing gallery because we're really just highlighting that this is a very dangerous creature, right? So we want to take um, several security precautions to make sure that the Indominus Rex is not going to get out. And what I'm doing right now, sinking the terrain inside the exhibit is also going to be an extra security feature for this habitat. Rather than just double fencing it, I decided to approach it a little bit differently, a little bit more creatively, I would say. Also, by the way, you can see that the fence lining the path has a bit of a curve. And then I added a secondary fence on the interior, which is just straight. That's not really a security precaution. You know, it's only on one side after all, but it's more so on one side, the, the, um, the fence could nicely follow the path. And on the other side, the fence is straight. Straight, so it doesn't look weird from the inside of the enclosure. This pathing is all like the entry to the VIP section, but I will be redoing this later because I decided that I wanted to add a building to this, a sort of like a checkpoint or ticket check point. 
I don't know. Uh, oh, by the way. <laughs> yeah, so this Velociraptor escapes, and this is, um, this is gonna get a sequel. This is gonna be, this is gonna be quite the little tragedy. I will say that right up front. Spoilers, I guess, but yeah. Um, so I tranquilized this raptor, and I used the feature that allows you to immediately have it be transported back into their habitat after the tranquilization was successful, right? Super handy feature. Uh, thank you to the people, the many people who've been pointing out that that exists. Uh, unfortunately, my notification blindness is going to have tragic results this time around. You can see at the top there, all of those notifications is what I've been dealing with. I've been covering them up for you guys. They really don't bother me. Like I, I don't, I literally don't see them. I know that that's mind boggling to other people. So let me just, boop, there you go. <laughs> Um, but yeah, because the, because the notifications have stacked up as much as they have, um, I did not realize things were going wrong as they were starting to go wrong. So um, yeah, we're gonna get we're gonna get back to that later. Don't worry about that. So yeah, we have this long path on the side that connects the viewing tower that overlooks Baryonyx Bay. Again, that's not ideal, it's just the way it had to be, because I did want to keep that tower, I was quite insistent on that, because it just looks nicer from Baryonyx Bay. Um, but then I had to, like, I had to maximize the space available here as well for the Indominus Rex enclosure, because it is kind of like a small little... A small little section, but I also just had my heart set on having it on the east side of the island so I could connect it to the east dock. And you know, sort of pretend that the east dock is where um, where the Indominus Rex was initially secretly brought into the park and where now, um, I don't know, food for the Indominus Rex gets brought in or whatever, or maybe like, you know, a constant flow of security personnel. I have no idea. I, j I was just really committed to the idea of having the east dock right by the indominus rex enclosure so that's why i i forced myself to squeeze it in here and i think it turned out all right though it has it has a relatively reasonable amount of space uh these openings right here are oh there you go tragedy has happened rest in peace my friend Rest in peace. Uh, so what happens? I say that as if I know what happened. I don't quite know what happens. Uh, but as as the Velociraptor, you know, I saw the notification that it had escaped. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna let her have her fun. Whatever, right? Living the dream. I'm gonna let her do that for a little bit as I focus on my build. And then I'll fetch her later, tranquilize her, put her back in. So I did that. But what I neglected to take into account is that while the Velociraptor was outside of the enclosure it did not have access to water and food um so by the time i tranquilized it and put it back into the enclosure it was at 30 percent health i will say that if you want you can go back you can look at the footage you can turn down the speed it was at about 30 i think it was 31 percent, something like that uh but apparently i i don't know why <laughs> but it once it was back in its enclosure, it went on a hunger strike or something because without me realizing it, it just refused to eat. So it 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 died. It had food, it had water, you know, all of the other dinosaurs, all of the other velociraptors in the habitat could just reach that, no problem. Uh, but this one was just like, Welp, I guess this is it for me. I will not be confined in this enclosure for the rest of my life. Freedom! Freedom! <laughs> they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom! Anyway, <laughs> if you like silly stuff like that, you might as well like the video. You might as well subscribe because you know there's more of where that came from. Let's continue with the build. So the, the outline of the habitat is done at this point, right? We have the fencing, we have the path. I'm gonna change some things up in that regard a little bit later on, but the outline is there, the skeleton is there. So at this point I was like, okay, I'm gonna detour to, oh God, I hit the microphone. He deserved it, okay? I'm gonna detour to the East Dark, which was the whole reason why I was so set on having this whole Indominus Rex section 
in this tiny area that I had left on the East Coast, so we could do an appropriate East Dock. I used a different path color here to differentiate it from the other path colors that I've been using in this park. I talked about this previously, but this is the path color that I hardly use anymore while building. I just feel like with the new Jurassic Park paths, we have a superior, more warm toned color set, and I always leave this one out. But for the purpose of the East Dock, which is more utilitarian, you know, it's, it's facility, it's only for personnel. I thought this was very, very appropriate. I, st I could not flatten this bit properly. Um, curse the game a little bit, you know, quietly, because I respect my neighbors. Um, so, you know, it, it was a little bit of a struggle later on trying to trying to get all of the decorations that I wanted here to actually work with the terrain constraints. <laughs> uh, I have strong feelings about those terrain constraints. <laughs> anyway, I'm lining little bits of the dock with these like concrete barriers, um, but I'm leaving most of it open because that is of course where ships would dock and I'm using these lights as... Um, I'm sure there's going to be a boating fanatic in the comment section right now who can educate me on what those things are called. Like the things that you tie the rope to to sort of secure your boat in place so it doesn't, you know, drift off in the night. Yeah, please tell me what those are called. Anyway, so I'm going for a very utilitarian type of look over here. I did the little tower, so that's like a control tower um, to, uh, I don't know, help ships dock, whatever. I'm placing a lot of containers here as well, so this is where all sorts of supplies would come in for the purpose of the Indominus Rex enclosure. I don't know, food, uh, perhaps uh, weaponry even. I don't know, just, I, I felt I felt like this was a cool place to do a little bit of a dock. Um, so I'm just making it a little bit messy, I guess. Uh, I had to, I had to put most of the decoration at the back of the dock, as you can see. Like I managed to put the cage at the front, but everywhere else, you know, terrain constraints, terrain constraints, terrain constraints. So that's basically the East Dock already done. It was a really simple build. You know, I didn't have that much space or rather I didn't want to use that much space for the East Dock. So I think this, you know, as a little dock, as a little nod, um, I think it's very serviceable. This is future Evo here. I completely changed my mind about the habitat. I completely changed my mind about the dock. The dock's gonna be way bigger, and basically this entire this entire habitat's gonna get overhauled at the end of the video. So stay tuned. So this section right here, uh, I put a red flag there. That is sort of to let people know that they, they can't go that way. That is only for authorized personnel. Uh, and I'm putting the same red flags on this end because this is the exit. So, you know, it's, it's a one-way street. People come in through this area and they leave through like the the double exit, the double hole in the wall on the other side across from the viewing galleries. So this is where I had my idea, or rather I remembered that I wanted to add a building here as a security check slash a ticket check to make sure that the people coming in here actually have VIP tickets. You know, they actually paid the extra fee to be able to uh, risk their lives looking at a murderous hybrid. Um, so I used the shelter for that. I just, you know, it was the perfect building anyway, but also it actually fit. It fit like a glove, which I was really happy about. Then I struggled with this path for a long time. <laughs> it's just, you know, 1 a.m. kind of things. <laughs> oh, before like my train of thought derails again, I should probably talk about why my planning was so poor that I had to build this at 1 a.m. Um, the story is, <laughs> I just... Contrary to popular belief, I do have a life, well, some semblance of it. So I was just busier this week than usual. And um, I also wanted to get my DLC wishlist video out yesterday. So that was like the late Jurassic pack, right? Because I'm, I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that there is going to be an announcement next week. Like no guarantees whatsoever. I'm just hopeful that there's going to be an announcement next week. So I really had to get that video out, that wishlist video, or it would make no sense, you know? It makes no sense to release a video like that, and then the next day or two days later have there be an announcement, because that's just, that, that's pointless. Um, 
So that's why I had to get that video out and that left me with like a bit of a time constraint for a mini Nular. So <laughs> yeah, I had to resort to building this at 1 a.m. And obviously I can't be talking like this at 1 a.m. because the walls here are paper thin and uh, my my like home office shares a wall with the bedroom of my next door neighbor. So you no, know, I was trying to be like a decent human being here. So that's why we had to do as we did. Um, so with that done, let me focus back in on the build here. I colored this with the mud, literally just so it was easier to see where the incline was. And then I covered the entire like little slope all the way around with rocks. Yes. Uh, so I started off with like that medium size and then the rest of it are these teeny tiny rocks. And I think at this point, you know, where I start to leave gaps, that's where I started to regret every decision that had led me to this point. Um, so I, I, the plan was then to fill the gaps, fill the gaps in the genome with some foliage, not frog DNA, foliage. Uh, and these rocks are kind of like an extra security precaution. You know, they prevent the Indominus Rex from uh, being able to charge at the fence because she can't, you know, run at full speed over these jaggedy rocks. Um, she probably can't even properly stand on them. So this would also uh, dissuade her from trying to climb the fence. So it's really just a, a more decorative version of double fencing. You know, I could have done something that um, I did in front of the viewing galleries, which is double fencing it, or in another part where there's like a little window looking into the enclosure right there at the bottom, you just saw it zooming by, there's invisible fence in front of the wire fencing. You know, I could have done that. I could have done concrete fence and wire fence or concrete fence and invisible fence, but I wanted to do a little bit differently. I wanted to torture myself with a whole bunch of rocks. So that's what I did. And I just, I, I think it's, I think it's kind of fun. I've used this before. I wanted to use it again. And I think it's also something that you can incorporate in your own parks. You know, if you're going for kind of like, okay, this is a dangerous creature and we need extra security measures to sort of emphasize that, but we don't want to go full on high security build with it. And I've done plenty of high security builds in the past as like part of my exhibit speed build series. So if you want to, if you want to see that, like a full on high security, double fencing, sentry points, uh, all of that stuff. If, if you want to see stuff like that, I've done that for the Indominus Rex, uh, the Indoraptor, the Scorpius Rex, a hybrid facility, a hybrid training facility, all sorts of high security builds. I did still want to keep this one in particular a little prettier, uh, you know, because it's Mini Nublar is a park. Um, and especially since this is the VIP section, I didn't want to go overboard. So I really like the rock technique. And I think it makes sense, you know, uh, a large carnivore balancing on those rocks um, is not going to be able to uh, use its full force to ram the fence. It's not going to be able to use its full agility to try and climb the fence. So yeah, I think it makes sense. Anyway. All of the, all of the, I'm just like letting you in on like the mental process that goes into this sort of stuff, you know, at 1 a.m. <laughs> so now I'm doing a little bit of exhibit work, um, just a little bit of dirt texture to liven it up a little bit, get, get a different color in there, not make it so green, some regular foliage, and then my favorite thing ever, which I've done a million times in this park already, which is a bit of a rock formation. So it just sort of separates the well it doesn't really separate the habitat but it obstructs the sight lines from certain angles so that you create different areas within the exhibit right so it's just a base of starting with big rocks uh, dwindling it down to littler rocks the fluffy bush and of course my my all-time favorite tree um and that's really it and other than that i left the exhibit quite open actually as i'm looking at this going i i love that i love the fence in front of the viewing gallery i think that really sets the tone anyway <laughs> as i'm looking at this i also feel like i maybe i could have gone for a more um a uh, more dense foliage feeling, uh, but there is a reason to this that I had at 1 a.m. Again, thought processes. Uh, so this is like a little security tower at the end there, because, um, um, 
you know, you, you'd have personnel keeping an eye on this dinosaur 24-7. So that goes into why I kept the exhibit as open as it is, you know, um... The, the the spooky feeling of the Indominus Rex enclosure in the movie where you can barely see her and all of a sudden she can like appear out of the tree line. That's really cool, but for security reasons, that's a really, really bad idea. So what I did instead was leave it open so that for security reasons, personnel can pretty much always have a visual sight line on the dinosaur and see what she's up to, which gives them, you know, more reaction time to respond if she's being suspicious. All right, so at this point, I remembered that we had these beautiful wall pieces. <laughs> so I put that one in, you know, I, I got rid of like the little... Um, uh, gate that I had created with the concrete fences and I replaced it with this um, like wall piece from the JP update and now it's just a matter of like adding decorations because you know this is the VIP section so you want people to feel you know like they're special you know they're they're getting their money's worth they paid for this fountain it's a special fountain. <laughs> I'm also using a little bit of uh, fencing and foliage to try to hide like the more utilitarian sides of the bunker. You know, the front of the bunker actually looks quite nice. It has the same sort of uh, fossil embossing, I don't know, fossil texture uh, along the door. So it's actually quite a nice building. I just hit like the quote unquote ugly parts of it. I'm just having a look at this point. It's almost 2 a.m. <laughs> the struggle is real. <laughs> so I was just having a look to see what I wanted to do. Um, so I went over to this path at the side. I replaced a lot of the fencing with concrete and left this little bit of wire fencing as a window. You can see that it actually creates a really nice moment. So I'm not mad about that. It is still a little bit weird to me to, um, yeah, to just have like this long path leading down there to only have the tower, but I didn't want to get rid of the tower and I also didn't want to sacrifice the space to uh, the second tour building or other amenities, the zip line. So it is what it is. It's one of those things that it just goes to show that if you don't plan everything out beforehand, you're, you are going to be left with little imperfections like this. I personally don't mind it too much. Um, but this is one of those instances that if you, if you did have the forethought uh, to plan your entire park out beforehand, areas like this would be much bigger. So it would make more sense. You know, I would turn this into a proper guest area with buildings and stuff like that. But alas, you know, Honestly, honestly, if this was a build where I could alter the coastline, you know, where the shape of the island doesn't matter, I would have just ma I would have just added extra land to it and then I could have made all of it work. You know, I could have created extra space. But because we had to keep mini Nublar the shape of Nublar, I obviously couldn't uh, couldn't cheat the system that way. But yeah, so that's actually a little tip that I literally just thought of right now. Unless you are building a mini Nublar yourself, you know, if you're just working with a regular island shape, um, just carve out a little bit more space for yourself. That's okay. That's okay. You can, you can be flexible. All right. So again, having a look around, cannot stress enough that we are nearing 2 a.m. at this point. <laughs> so this felt a little bit empty. So I'm adding some foliage in there to fill it out a little bit because... Yeah, just the, the empty bit of grass doesn't look very, very nice, I guess. That's really the thing with this whole park. Like, there's so much, there's so much detail in here. Uh, for the people who know, um, I actually switched PCs. I have a an even more beefy PC right now. It's like that little viral clip of, I don't know if you've seen this, but like of the guy impersonating a girl buying a new PC and being like, oh, I have this super powerful PC to play my favorite game. And it's like uh, Animal Crossing or something. <laughs> It's giving that energy, you know, I bought a super overpowered PC to play this game, but honestly I will say Jurassic World Evolution 2 needs some uh, needs some serious processing power because it is poorly optimized. Anyway, um, what was I talking about? <laughs> 
Oh, I remember, I remember. Uh, so what I was gonna talk about is that even though I have this beefy PC, uh, Mini Nublar is so detailed that, you know, the frame rates are starting to drop. We're still, you know, comfortably between... It, it sort of fluctuates between 50 and 70 FPS. Uh, but considering that Mini Nublar is only... Um, a small portion of the available space on the square map. That's saying something. <laughs> like, I'm I'm scared for when the time comes that I'm going to try to fill the whole square with a park. I honestly don't feel like Jurassic World Evolution 2 is made for my building style that I've sort of adopted with this game. You know, there's too much detail. There's too much detail in my parks to be able to make a full square park, like a full, a fully built up square map to make that work at this level of detail. <laughs> so I had like this super scary bug when I loaded in. Uh, there was a little clip of it at the start of the video. I loaded into this map <laughs> and whenever I clicked on something, like the menu for that building it just didn't show so i couldn't do anything oh my god like you cannot you can't even imagine the sweaty palms <laughs> that i had at that moment because i really thought no no way did did mini nublar just broke i i was scared i was scared uh, but thankfully reloading the park fixed whatever little mishap that was but oh my god that was so scary like all sorts of scenarios were already going through my head like like I'm, oh i'm gonna have to make a video mini nublar is dead <laughs> thankfully mini nublar is still alive and kicking and uh i'm excited for the next and last few episodes i think maybe three episodes to go something like that so that's super exciting here we go finally making the indominus rex and by the way speaking of future episodes you're gonna get like you're gonna get a scoop right here next week is gonna be stream week i'm gonna be live for one hour every single day and what we're gonna be doing for mini nublar that means that we're gonna be building mini nublar live so one hour of live mini nublar building uh it'll probably be on friday because episodes nowadays are more so on friday than on thursdays so yeah get excited for that we're gonna be in mini nublar building live and the other days of the week i will also be live streaming I don't know if I'm going to mix up the games or if it's just going to be Jurassic World Evolution 2. Um, I don't know. Maybe you guys can help me decide on that, but I'm excited about that. And after that live stream episode, yeah, maybe two, maybe three more episodes, like regular building episodes. And then finally the tour. It's going to be so long, guys. It's going to be another hour tour video. I'm convinced. And just when we all thought we were done with this build, she completely changes her mind. Okay, so this is... I, I literally just did this this afternoon. It is now getting close to crunch time to getting this video out on time. But, like, you know, I, I built what I built at 1am. I think Evo did good. 1am Evo did good. She did fine. She's okay. We're gonna make excuses for her. Um, but daytime Evo is not exactly pleased with the results. So after literally editing and recording this entire video, I realized I want to, I want to change it up. I have a solution to make the East Dock bigger and make the habitat more exciting. And that is by extending the East Dock into the habitat but what we're actually gonna do is sort of like um, a very theme park-esque approach to it in the sense that the the part of the east dock that we made during the main part of the episode that is real functional dock that is accessible to personnel they can unload stuff there you know the whole storyline that we um that 1am evo came up with right it's all fine and then with a double layer of invisible fencing, we've, uh, we are now continuing the East Dock into the habitat, but as a 
mock continuation of it. So that's not actually functional. That's all just an illusion, as Dr. Ellie Sadler would say. So I changed up the entry point over there. I added in the gates, um, also adding like extra wall pieces over here, sort of to compensate for the fact that on this backside of the Indominus Rex enclosure, there's now only invisible fencing. So just in case the invisible fencing would fail, we're kind of pretending here that, um, you know, these, these rock barriers go out into the ocean until the ocean water is deep enough. And we're just going to pretend that Indominus Rex either can't swim or is not a very good swimmer. So that's, that little precaution just buys the park enough time to respond in case of an escape. You know, in case the double invisible fencing fails like that's already there that's already in contingency right having the second layer of invisible fencing that you can see right there a little bit of path in between to help again the illusion so if both of those would fail she would then have to swim around this rock barrier that extends out into sea we have to remember that the water over there is the actual ocean so yeah now i've just added like a continuation of the east dock inside the indominus rex habitat i'm like using this sort of path technique that leaves out little cracks that gives it the you know the illusion that it's you know it's been a little bit abandoned it's not being maintained adding some foliage around it to you know make it a little bit more spooky and a little bit more natural and i think this just worked out so much better and i'm a little bit ashamed that 1am evo didn't think of it but you know i'm gonna cut her some slack and at least this idea came to me in time to be able to to fix it. And I think this just works out so much better so that our VIP guests can look out into the enclosure from the window over there in the fencing and they can see like this this little fake dock and it's sort of like a, a theatrical scenario yeah so I, i'm i like this much much better i hope you do as well if you do please give it a like and god let's all keep our fingers crossed that this video is gonna come out on time <laughs> all right but yeah so that's that's what i wanted to show you I did want to show you the, uh, you know, the, the build that 1AM EVO did because, you know, we've used pretty much the entire base of it. This is just like a little last minute adjustment. All right. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and until next time, enjoy the game. Don't worry. I'm giving her a goat feeder and water. Okay. Don't worry. <laughs>